Hello, everybody. Welcome again to, well, actually, you guys never left, but I'm back on the stage. So how many of you guys have listened to the Bad Crypto podcast before? One, two, three. Mo Hi, Mom. It's like four people. <laughs> Hi, you. Mom. All four of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's super fun to, to have people like this who don't just educate, <laughs> but they also entertain. Uh, so today's topic are going to be some things that could really end up dystopian if we don't handle them properly. Uh, it is Web3, NFTs, and the metaverse. Uh, I'm Erica Gemma. I'm very well known in the city of Miami for just starting community here, opened up a Bitcoin center a couple years ago, and now I have a venture fund called Timelock Ventures, and now I have one of the first NFT podcasts as well as a very long-running crypto podcast. How many listeners do you guys have now? How many listeners? We've had like four. Four. Yeah, there's been, I think we're at like 10 million or so downloads. So I don't know, divided by one listener. They listened a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> divided by one. Yeah. All right. So just, just to get started, content creation is so important, right? And in this Web3 world, we're going to see the individual content creator be able to monetize directly from their audience instead of having to go through these third parties. So let's say that there are people in the audience who are very interested, they have a community of friends that don't know that much about cryptocurrencies yet. Is there anything that you recommend to them to get started for their local friends? Well, I would, I would say this. this is kind of one of the things that we say for most people when, when they're trying to figure it out, right? Most people start off crypto level zero, right? You don't know anything. First of all, you gotta get your Coinbase account. That maybe levels you up to level two, level one. Level two, you got to get your MetaMask, right? So once you get your MetaMask set up, and then you know, then you can maybe buy some NFTs. But first of all, you got to get your, your Ethereum over there. To, so it's, that's a complex thing for a lot of people when they really get started, right? And then, um, then you got to, oh, I got to, how do I get BSC on my MetaMask? Well, then you got to figure that out and make sure you're not putting in the wrong things because you could get scammed and all your money could be gone, right? So it's really, it's like walking through and, and getting that stuff set up. What we've done is we set up a, um, an episode, episode 210, and uh, it's badco.in forward slash 210, which really gives people the intros and the basics. But I think we probably ought to do a new one for intro to you know, Web3 and, and NFTs. We've not done that yeah. for a while. It's, everything's changing so quickly. Yeah. It definitely. Yeah, it definitely does change quickly, but like you said, podcast 210 for the, those of you guys who are looking to get started. This is why I'm not writing another book. I've written 15 books and I'm not writing a book on crypto because just by the time it hits the shelves, it's outdated. Yeah, definitely outdated. It, it, constant knowledge is important. Constantly learning is very important. That's why you guys put out a show. How frequently does your show come out? Usually two bad crypto a week and two nifty show. We slow down a little bit here. I don't know, we're getting old and tired, maybe? Is that it? <laughs> we did not do one this week. No, we, we did are not. Here. So you have the Nifty Show as well. Yep. So Nifty Show, Bad Crypto Podcast, check them out, you guys. So how about, okay, so NFTs, Web3, Metaverse. Let's start with NFTs. What kind of NFTs do you own? Do you guys own any pet rocks? Uh, yeah, so I think the most valuable NFT I own is one of Gary V's gift goats. Travis owns one too, because Gary understands that NFTs unlock experiences. And I, that, I think getting that into the head of the mainstream, that this is not about a picture or piece of art, it's about what owning this, the loyalty um, that you, you are a part of, and, and what physical goods, what digital goods, what intangibles, what in-person events, what autograph materials. It's really, it's up to the creator to decide what value do I want to bring? And of course, creators are so incentivized to add value because now they're getting a piece of the secondary market value. By the way, this is Rufus, and this is his first keynote. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> NFT this picture. <laughs> he, his ears all perked up. Yeah, you know, so that's, one, that's one of the things that um, is, is so key, that whole utility thing. And I have always said this, like people think, you know, and we're talking to the choir here, really, but people go, oh, NFTs, they're JPEGs. And it's like, well, 
it, it can be, there's a lot of things. It can be, I like the, the, the acronym VITAL. It can be video, images, text, audio, links. It can be 360, AR, VR. It can be geo proximity based. It can unlock at events. It can uh, evolve over time. NFTs are essentially the smart contract, smart computer that you can program it to do anything you can imagine it to do. And so when, you, when people start understanding that and you go, wow, I don't have just this JPEG, I have this membership card. Somebody, I, saw, I saw an Instagram uh, yesterday where somebody was talking about how Bored Apes, Bored Apes is not just a, a community, it's a freaking mastermind group because you're in a discord with people who can drop down $250,000 on this thing. So you're in there and you're chatting with Mr. Beast and Gary V and Eminem has one. All, all these guys, Snoop Dogg, right? It's like well, that's it's actually pretty interesting when you think about it. I just right click save as Jew and now I own you. Oh yeah? So you're gonna come to my community? No. Yeah, I, I always say that uh, NFTs are the new way for the Soho houses to exist, especially in a global world, and especially now that we have metaverses popping up. Uh, so you answered my question, what are the, some of the explanations of the high value of NFTs? It's because it's access to a networking community. I mean, to go to Soho House, I think it's like, what, a five, ten thousand dollar application just to uh, be able to come to Soho Houses, and now you have Discord chat rooms that automatically read your MetaMask wallet to say, do you or do you not have this NFT? If yes, you're allowed to enter and network with these people. So um, now let's talk about Metaverse. Wait, did you want to say something? Well, I was just going to say the beautiful thing is it never has to end with NFTs. You can just keep adding value to what people are holding. For you know, Gary says he's got a 40-year roadmap. That's the rest of his life. So you guys have an NFT drop coming up, right? We do. We're uh, launching the fourth edition of our blockchain heroes as the uh, heroes are in the fight against the evil centralizers. And um, we launch on Friday, uh, the 21st, and we've got a pack sale. Uh, we've minted over one and a half million NFTs on wax with zero gas fees. Ethereum people, zero gas fees. And uh, the previous three editions have all sold out, uh, the last one in 35 seconds. So we're hoping that uh, people will embrace this one as well. Yeah, it's all been about educating people about blockchain and the decentralization of things. And as Erica mentioned, like we're at this precipice right now where we can see the evil doers that are kind of running the world, they really like centralized power, right? And they, you know, they're able to do these mandates and they can say and do what they want and they can move things through. Paper money is running out. It's, it's nearing the end of its life cycle. And so that's one of the reasons I think we're in this thing because they're, 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 they're at this planned obsolescence of paper money. And so we're at this interesting time. And so what we've done is we, we really created this series. The first series was 50 you know, luminaries in blockchain and they were all based on real people. And then as we evolved and kept creating them, they became a, based on principles. There's the centralizers, you know, there's, those are the villains. They're the ones that are, you know, uh, big corporations, IRS, some of the government corruption, just goes, it goes deep into that. And then the heroes that, that teach about decentralization. And, uh, and so it's really an educational play, and it's been really fun. This series right here, uh, Joel's son, Zach, is, is the creative director on the thing. And I think these are some of the coolest NFTs that, have, that are in existence at this point. Each one of the characters has its own individually original soundtrack, all to this sort of 80s synth wave vibe. And like they're animated, like just some of them are like a little th little animated theatrical deal. Like it's like we went all out on this one right here. Like these, so we not only do we want to just to create NFTs, you know, hey, collect our shit. It's we want these to be valuable. We want them to have utility. We want them to educate. We want them to inspire others. And so that's why we've chose Wax. That's why we've been on Wax right since the very beginning. We were one of the very first to even launch a series on Wax. And because um, well, yeah, on atomic assets, on atomic assets, yeah, because yeah. top speed us to the punch top, on simple speed, assets. Yeah. Not not only that, we're big into the community. We love the wax community. We love supporting others in the community. Yes, and that guy. We Rose. have in this set. We have invited forty partners. This is the biggest collaborative release in the history of NFTs. So we're uh, we're breaking new ground here. All all the partners have original exclusive NFTs in the set.
So let's talk about this. You said that your NFT has utility, right? Now it's also utility, it's these communities that are built in Discord, so they're global communities. And now we have, you know, enter the metaverse, right? How do these NFTs and how do you guys see NFTs interacting with the metaverse and maybe multiple metaverses? Well, everything that you own in the metaverse in some form, including your digital identity, will be an NFT. All of the objects, the land that you own, the objects, the trees and buildings that you put on the land, the, the artwork and NFTs that you put on the walls within your buildings, uh, the items that give you advantage in various games, your swords, your skins, your KC hats, that'll be an sure. NFT. So yeah. what, it, okay, let's explain, because I, I hear a lot of people throw around the word metaverse, and I'm like, just because you have a VR headset does not mean you're in the metaverse. Okay? I think we're using it wrong. Yeah, in please, general, let's talk about that. We're using it wrong, because all of these um, different, um, what we're calling metaverses, sandbox, decentraland, crypto voxels, and so on, they're verses. They are their own community, but a metaverse means a collection of all of those together. So when we approach the singularity, right, and all of these have interconnectedness and you can transfer items from one to another, that's when we have a true metaverse. So we're just going to keep on using the word wrong until then, which is fine because... Maybe it's metavi. Yeah, we're giving it a new meaning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, want to, I want to say this here because, um, you know, so Blockchain Heroes has, has been a labor of love. As I mentioned, his son is doing the, doing the creative direction on that. And then my son actually helped doing a lot of the, the production of the finishing of the artwork. And he's actually here at his very first conference ever. Where Derek, right Jerk. there. Right? Wave his hands up there. That's awesome. Very yeah. first crypto conference for little J-Rock. I think that's what's been the most fun with going down the NFT rabbit hole. The whole lockdown stuff, as inconvenient as it was, was just a huge boon for us because we used that opportunity to create the blockchain heroes and NFTs. I worked, we had me and Travis and both of our sons. So the whole initial project was done by two father-son teams. So NFTs bring families together. Yeah, I mean, Corona has definitely accelerated the adoption of some of these, right? We actually have to meet online. A lot of times people didn't even know about Zoom until the, the pandemic happened. So uh, A lot of people didn't know the weird things that could happen on Zoom until the pandemic happened. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about metaverses again. Now, Mark Zuckerberg, right? Renamed Facebook to Meta. Personally, I think he did that to Blech. confuse people. He personally, he did that to confuse people who don't understand the technology. Um, but what do you think is gonna happen with decentralized metaverses and then Mark Zuckerberg's Meta? Well, I think what's gonna happen is that the people are gonna speak, right? I think that right now, you know, the Oculus headset, the Sony headset, those are very centralized. There, are, there is no decentralized VR headset yet. So that creates a problem. So there needs to be some sort of technology of some hardware company that's building something that can access all of them. Because right now, unless there's a, there's a hack or, or a uh, sort of, um, you know, a patch to be able to use Oculus for other stuff. Like, I don't know if you can use it for sandbox, just go into the browser or not, I don't know. I've not done that. But it, it's, it's interesting, I think people are gonna speak and I think that what's most exciting for people is this, this whole, what's bringing in a lot of people is this whole play to earn and game fi. It's not just about the metaverse. I think metaverse is still, it's still nascent, it's still gonna be, it's still gonna grow. People are talking about it, they're hyping it, but Really, you know, we, we, we saw this, that DeFi was the year of 2020. We knew 2021 was going to be the year of NFTs. We saw that in advance. We think 2022 is going to be the year of uh, play to earn and GameFi. And so as more and more people start br coming in and earning crypto, I mean, shit, you can make so much money just sitting and playing video games now. It's unbelievable. Uh, I'm earning money in Townstar as we speak. It is auto-selling. Gala Games Town Star. It's making me like 250 bucks a day. I go in for five minutes a day and click a button and, and collect. 250 Wait. bucks a day. Like some people don't make that at their job, working at a really crappy job that they hate, and he just clicks a button and like. Seriously. Yeah. What's hey. the name of the game again? Give it Hold up. Hold on, I gotta get to work. Click. All right, I'm done. I'm gonna go to the beach. <laughs> What's the name of the game again? It's a Town Star. Uh, Gala Town Star, Gala yeah. Games is uh, the ones to watch. Animoca Brands, Gala Games, Splinterlands, Star Atlas, uh, Starchy, just to be. Vulcan Forged. Yep. Oof. 
Yeah, Vulcan Forged is one of the big sleepers. Those guys, and uh, we were advisors with them early on, full disclosure, they, uh, they built the closest thing I've seen to a multiplayer, an MMORPG, like World of Warcraft, still very early, but man, these guys. And what's interesting is that they're a game company first. You have a lot of people that in the, you know, the land rushes decide, oh, we can make money making blockchain games. But the, the best developers are those that are already developing games and going, oh, you know, it makes sense for us to put this on blockchain so that players have true ownership of their assets. That's exactly, that's exactly what's happening. And you're gonna, the model for gaming is completely flipping. Like, why does somebody want to spend $65 for a game and play that game where you don't own any of the assets and you can't resell any of those assets? So blockchain gaming is really is really flipping it, and so I think that's going to be really big. No matter how big Bitcoin gets or how low it gets this year, play to earn and GameFi is is still going to move forward. Big. Yeah, and the media is going to pick up on that this year, yeah. just like last year we saw the stories. Uh, you know, the the media sensationalizes everything. So the big stories: Beeple sells for sixty nine million dollars, and Gronkowski is doing NFTs. This year they're going to latch on to the young people, especially sub 20 year olds that are making serious bank more than their parents and teachers doing play to earn gaming and and our prediction has been that this year we're going to see more under 20 year old millionaires made than ever before in human history because of play to earn my son just turned 20 so i guess you're too old buddy you missed it sorry sorry dude so play to earn definitely is where we're seeing things move. I think that it's not only going to be play to earn, it's going to be um, like work out to earn, right? Rewarding people for be human behaviors that they should do in a way where they can earn cryptocurrencies instead of, you know, not being rewarded at all. I'd like an eat to earn. Can I, can I get <laughs> one of those? Eat this delicious filet and earn some filet coins. Yeah. Well, you know, actually Microsoft has that patent. Actually, Microsoft has a patent that is, it's, it's tied to some internal chip of some sort where you're like moving around and doing certain stuff and then you'll be able to earn crypto. And that came out in 2020 and they yeah, were talking about that. Yeah, it's patent 2020 It is. It's really, it's really kind of bizarre. That's a true story. I know. But, I mean, think about that. You go, well, if you don't move a certain amount, then you don't get your, you know, your universal basic income. And if you don't get your latest virus update patch, then you're not going to get it either. Number 23. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk Crazy. about that. It, comes, it becomes pretty dystopian when you think about people living in metaverses, living with headsets, earning while they're in the game, being incentivized to stay in the game. It's very ready player one. Now, uh, this I'm, I'm so glad that you brought up this Microsoft patent that, built, that Microsoft put out in 2020, because it says it's a device that reads your body data and rewards you in cryptocurrency for performing certain tasks. Now, plugging that into the metaverse with you know, our NFTs on the wall, how do you see Web3 tying this all together to make it so uh, individuals are able to directly monetize on what they do in the metaverse. They're going to have the carrot on the stick, right? It, it, meta is no different from Facebook. It's just a, a new shiny name on a turd, right? And by the way, I got off of Facebook over a year ago, and I am happier for it. You do your own due diligence and research. Same thing with Instagram. I don't need to... You know who your real friends are. They're not so-called friends. Where was I? Yeah, and then this thing, too, is that in the Web2 world, right, of the Instagrams, of the Twitters, you have followers. A lot of people who have a lot of followers, I'm sorry, but most of them are probably bots, right? But in the Web3 world, and you can't make money directly off those followers unless you're doing some type of ad campaign or you're just selling directly to them. But in the Web3 world, how do you see that relationship with followers changing? Well, it's probably going to be tied to... Uh, you know, well, you can look at your wallet and you can see what people are holding in their wallets, right? So I think Gary Vee mentioned that. It's like in the future, social media is going to be what's in your wallet, you know? I want to, do, do you have this? Do you have that? Okay, we are, you're, I can tell who you are by the NFTs that you hold, right? And so there's going to be some of that. And I think that it's just, it's just, it's really a very interesting time right now because it's like, it's one of those things that's like, we normally can, Joel and I are normally pretty good at predicting certain things, but right now there's so much uncertainty in the world, it's really hard to tell how are we going to teeter? What's, what's going to happen here over these next 
12, 24 months, because it could be a huge shift in humanity, and I don't know, it's just, it's just wild to pay attention to it right now. I can, in fact, I have a prediction. I can tell you with certainty in 30 seconds they're going to kick us off the stage. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, uh, definitely important. Oh, hell yeah, that's true, by the way. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn it, Buster. Buster. In the real world. Well, awesome. Well, t tell us, where can they find you guys to learn more about your podcast and what you're doing? Also, if you have a list of these PTE games, uh, let us know. Let the audience have some alpha. Yeah. Badcryptopodcast.com, theniftyshow.com. We're on all the podcast channels. And, and follow him on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> and I won't follow you back. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Give it up for Joel and Travis, the Bad Crypto Podcast. Erica Gamma and the Bad Crypto Podcast.